Welcome to our course, Neural Network. And in this part of our course, we're going to learn how to choose loss function. So this lesson is actually very important because this would um, give more value to the kind of output our model, neural network model, will be producing. First of all, the choice of the kind of loss function we're going to use would be very good in defining the kind of output that would be sensitive to the kind of application that we are going to produce or we are producing. So here are some of the reasons why do we have to properly choose the kind of um, loss function uh, we're going to use for our neural network. So first of all, it actually it's actually very critical. It, it's a very critical decision. So as what I've said, um, it's very indispensable it's a very indispensable part of the ingredient in making a very robust machine learning model so that's what that's the very beginning of the plan of what kind of neural network to use you have to properly identify the kind of loss function you're going to use the second one would be the task sensitivity of course different applications would require different way of um, attacking a certain problem when it comes to the kind of loss function to use. Your loss function would point out what kind of metric you're going to use so that you'd be able to also measure the performance of the model. Next one is the task specific of objectives. So this means to say that the kind of loss function would, would actually depend on what kind of task we're going to use. Is it regression? Is it binary classification? Is it another type of problem? Because, of course, regression has its own way of measuring its loss. In the case of binary classification, it also has its own way of measuring its loss. So later on, we, we are going to have more discussions about that. Next one is the influence on model behavior. This is actually very interesting because different applications would require different ways of measuring the performance of the model. And the kind of loss function that we are going to use would also quantify how well or how poorly this particular model is performing depending on a certain task that is at hand. And also, loss function would also tell you or would also tell you whether or not it's very robust outliers or class imbalances or how resilient the model is with respect to the different um, changes in the behavior of our data that would come in. Of course, we have to expect that our data, the behavior of our data changes. So, for example, the, the behavior of persons, of our customers for this particular season is different from their behavior with respect to another season. But of course, um, the buying behavior would change, the fad would change, and so on and so forth. And also, as what I've said, um, the loss function would tell you if your training data is good or it is not. So when I say good, um, that would mean that the metrics would tell you that something is wrong with the way you prepare your data set with respect to the cleaning, for example, with respect to um, feature engineering. Taking all of these things together and the performance metrics would tell you that, oh, oh something is wrong with your preparations, with your um, feature engineering. And the last one would be um, the choice of your loss function would affect or would tell you how well the model is um, in generalization, in um, taking into consideration the data that is not seen. So these are just some of the very important considerations that you have to properly think about when um, choosing the kind of loss function that you're going to use for your neural network. Let's have the case of regression. Of course, you know what regression is. So you have here y squared minus the y hat, and then we square the value. So this would actually, oh, this, this tells you actually the, the kind of loss or the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So it means to say you're going to see the error. And this error would tell you how close your model is to the reality and 
when the value is very high, then it would mean that your model is not uh, very close to reality. Of course, when it is uh, very minimal, then it would tell you that your model is very close to reality. And um, this is actually very important for you to be able to also understand whether or not your model is robust, your model is very good in generalization. So this is just actually a very simple squared loss that would tell you how good your regression model is. And actually, there are still a lot of um, loss functions that you can use for your regression model apart from this one. So you can use RMSE. You also have the R squared. So of course, each metric um, will tell you um, different insights as to how good your model is. Then we have binary classification. So this is actually very different from the regression because this would tell you that in this case, you're actually um, classifying things. By the word itself, it's a binary, so it means two. So for example, we have a hinge, a hinge loss, which can have a value of negative one or positive one. This value um, would tell you how close it is to reality, how far this particular thing to reality. And this value is actually uh, before the application of any activation function. And here's one very important thing that you have to consider, why we have to use activation function. So let's remember this, this that um, having this one without the introduction of any activation function would tell you that it's just very simple. It's actually very far from the reality. And so with the use or with the introduction of activation function, we would like to introduce a nonlinearity for the network to be able to learn an approximate um, very complex mappings between the input and the outputs. So it's it's actually very important because the real world scenario um, is actually very complex. We have a lot of things to consider. We have a lot of uh, features to consider. And by so introducing the activation function would help us in capturing these complex relationships. And so we have here, we have the hinge loss. So now it has the identity activation. And this would tell you that it's actually minimizing the error. And now we have the case of multi-way predictions. So this is actually very different from the binary classification, which we just predict two options. But in this case, we have a multi-way predictions, three or four or more. So in this case, actually, softmax output is particularly is very, very useful because um, it's probabilistic, and it requires a different type of loss function. And of course, if you're going to use other kinds of loss function, um, softmax, of course, would not be useful in this case, and others would not be probabilistic. They can be deterministic. So in this case, for probabilistic uh, predictions, we can have uh, two types of loss functions, depending on the kind of prediction, the binary or the multiway. Do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.